Hello and welcome to the Lost Art Podcast. I'm Gar and I'm here with Paul. How's it going? And uh, this week we are doing the world's most hated. So what we're doing... Artists, yeah. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're going to be looking at a bunch of kind of bands and acts and singers or whatever that for some reason or another have just been tarnished with the fucking hate brush that m- yeah. may not necessarily deserve it. Um, we, t- we touched on little bits of it in the insufferable, yes. but those were our choices of, of singular people. Yep. This is like, this could be one, an artist. Yeah, some of these people have just been, I don't really fully understand the rap some of them get. A lot of them, yeah. A lot of them. A lot, a lot of them I do. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I, what I will say is that there was a bunch of these bands and acts that we've covered a lot before that I didn't want to use. So I kind of went, I went a little bit fresh, and you did as well. Um, we kind of didn't pick the big, the ones that we scraped off, scraped off before. You know, it's bands like My Chemical Romance and whatever. There's, there's, there's a thousand bands that we've touched on before in these type of podcasts. Um, yeah, a lot of these people have made on other podcasts before, mostly actually in a good light, weirdly. Kind of, yeah. Um, so we should probably just get straight into it. Who's your first choice for the world's most hated? My first one is The Man They Love To Hate. Or maybe it's The Man They Hate To Love. No, it's definitely The Man They Love To Hate. Chris Borg. Yeah. Through my childhood I've known, this lad's just been hated. Yeah. Hated in Ireland. Yeah. He's a fine example of Irish begrudgery, possibly. But to be fair, Lady in Red is yeah. a great a great in song. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I don't mind it. I don't think it's that bad. Lady not really red, it is what it is um like i just have known from like the size when you hear when he, his name comes oh, everyone in the room oh, fucking i know i know not so Irish much people. anymore but definitely no, back in the day well, yeah yeah back, back in the day he was not. definitely hated definitely because he's yeah. weird looking he was definitely weird looking as well like. he is weird looking he looks like a fucking history teacher or something doesn't he considering yeah. his fucking daughter like wherever that came I from know. and um it was, it was sack it's straight up, it's, it's actual arsehole. We talked about this before. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christoborg, yeah, like Christoborg, right? Like, I know he has that, like, it's a yeah, a yeah. voice. And Lady in Red is, but you think Lady in Red, right? I, I don't like it, like, whatever, I don't hate it. But he has some quite, like, kind of bangers early mm-hmm. on. A few, like the song I picked there, Spaceman came from. Yeah, that's a great song. I love that song. Yeah. La, 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 that's about God as well, isn't it? I think it's a God, God song. Yeah, I think it's a God oh, song. God. I'm almost certain it's a God song. Possibly. Um, probably, probably why I didn't pick it for the God. Good versus Evil soundtrack. Mm. Soundtrack? Soundtrack? Soundtrack um, to Good wrote, versus Evil. <laughs> he wrote this song about his wife, Diana, after seeing her in a red dress across a crowded room and not realizing it was her. Who gives Shut it? up. <laughs> it's about the third worst song of all time by Channel 4. Really? Um, it's also known as Fergie, the Duchess of York's uh, favorite song, and that didn't help him. And he even came out and said, "Listen, I can't help that. I, I like, I can't tell the royals what to like and not like." Yeah, yeah. it is like that song is is and a lot of his songs from the eighties were super cheesy and kind of oh, fancy, overly he, sentimental stuff. And you know what it is as well? That's one. That's one reason. Lady mm-hmm. in Red is just the first reason of three or four I've have here as to why I think it is. Like it's. You know what? Lyrically, is it's a pox of a song, but yeah. like, melody wise, not a bad melody. He's just fuck. I'm reading about him here, so he's he's, he's British, Irish, whatever the fuck that means. That's, that's that brings me on to my second thing. Yeah, he's middle class, very kind of sings sing. He sang "Lady in Red" in a posh voice. That's a yeah. posh yeah. sounding song. He's like unashamedly like boring as well. Like he's he, do, he doesn't do the rock and roll thing at all. He mm. walks the dogs. Um, be, being a mix in Irish, of, of English and Irish and being posh definitely was the catalyst of Irish people turning their back on him. Not just, like, his name is Chris de Borg, but can you imagine, like, oh, double people, like, it's Christy Bork. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. And, and their, name, their name's Christy Bork. <laughs> <laughs> your name's Christy Bork. <laughs> you're posh, you're yeah, posh Christy cunt, yeah. Borg. You know what, I'm just Borg. looking here, you know what, he was born in Argentina. He was, yeah. That's fucking mad. I didn't know that now. Born in Argentina. I hadn't a clue. He lives in Wexford. Fucking he picking strawberries. Wexford, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, one of the third reasons is his daughter won, first of all, in 2003, Miss Ireland, in the mm. same year, Miss Europe, and in the same year, Miss World. Jesus. A lot of people are very, very cynical saying that he asked her to go in to do that to kind of revamp his career I think that's absolutely that's nonsense that's nonsense 
how would that how would his daughter win in any like beauty contest fucking reinvigorate the career of one of the ugliest men to ever live the cunt literally yeah. looks like a vulcan without the pointy ears i like, like his daughter as well not only is she pretty well it's not my type but she's that classically pretty where you can look and go yeah, yeah. it's not hurting me fucking eyes mm. uh, she started presenting on lfc tv for the liverpool football All right. so she is a lady in red <laughs> you remember football day Oh shut up! No, actually, I'm football. Change the subject. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> he uh, still sell. Oh, here's another thing as well. I don't know if I should bring this up. This is kind of one, kind of shitty. He cheated on his wife while she was in hospital with a broken neck. Really? Yeah. Who did he That's cheat on her with? Do we know? Nanny with the nanny with the nanny with the, nanny. With the daughter's nanny. Mm. Yeah. Um. He he also like in all interviews he seems to come across as pretty sound, but he did say like he did use this quote and it's actually quite good. Bono might want to wrote on him in mm. Ireland, no good deed ever goes unpunished. unpunished. Yep, yep. That's Very a much. Lord Dunsey. Mm. Dunsany quote. Um so yeah it's kind of um this is the thing about Crystal Borg, like yeah, the songs I've heard where I've gone, Jesus Christ, that's just shite. Yeah. But I've never got the actual hate for it. He would have to himself be annoying or say really shitty things for me to go. No, yeah, he'd have to go like, full Morrissey or something like that to be yeah. hated and, to that level. Like, And he lives in Ireland, like, you know what I mean? So he yeah. chose, he, if you have to look at it like that, he chose. But. He's Ar- he's an Argentinian English Irishman. Yeah. like He still sells three to 5,000 seats when he plays. Easily. Easily. And seats, lads, because he's getting mm. on and the, the, the crowd are getting on. He's seventy one. Seventy fucking one. Yeah. No, like, I'm still looking at love like I did tonight. That's, that's yeah, I know I, I fucking do hate that song actually. No. Fuck you, Chris, <laughs> Christy Bork. Christy anyway, Bork. That was Christy Bork. Who's your first one? Uh I picked you too. It's a fairly obvious one. Yeah. We, uh, we, we had we had him in, in some of but to be honest with you, you're right. The people hate the edge as well. People, people fucking hate. hate. Well, I, here's the thing, right? I, like I went I didn't go down a big wormhole, but I, I'd done a good bit of reading about U2. Just, obviously, I knew fucking U2 and I, I know loads of that stuff, but I it was like, you know, I want to know, is there, is there a basis for it? So I went rooting. And um, they seem to be kind of, like, unashamedly hated by people. Like, well, like we, I, I meant to say this at the start as well. Some of these people are victims of a snowballing effect of they see a few people slagging them and then it just becomes a thing where people think that they hate Yeah, them I think so. I hate a thing. They're joining so. a sort of bandwagon where they're like, yeah. and especially with some of the people later on the podcast, it definitely became cool to hate. And you yeah. too like are one of the edgiest things to say that you hate, even though the band themselves. I don't know why anyone that likes music would hate you too. It's, it's, it's not even that they're a non-entity. They're just... They're just, they, they are their own thing. They've evolved. Every album is completely fucking different. Like when you go back, the song I picked for the playlist was uh, The Unforgettable Fire. And you go and listen to The Unforgettable Fire and you'd be like, you'd be forgiven for thinking that you were listening to like a killing joke song. It the sounds, yeah. Like <laughs> it's, it sounds like a fucking killing joke song. It has all the yeah. points that that kind of 80s kind of poppy got stuff has. Like it's recorded yeah, it does, the same. Huh? I, like, they've done so many things. They've done stuff like that. They've moved into even even their ballads like yeah. Where the Streets Have No Name and One are still top notch. Fucking right. Fucking and then right. they move into like the the sort of tongue in cheek zero uh, pop era. I yeah. just think that's great as well. Exactly. Like they've always evolved, they've always changed their sound. And there's something there for everyone. Like they have a string, a fucking string of classical hits like they're timeless songs that this band have put out you don't have, have to be a, yeah. a, like a massive fan to appreciate some of these like New Year's Day or whatever. like you don't have to be a fan to appreciate those well, songs like, quiet. Like, I don't even know like he's got a great voice he do, when, he, like, when he wants to yes people hated people hated you two before they realised Bono was a pox exactly but here's the thing the this, is, this is the crux of the whole situation I think people only hate you two because of Bono no, people don't like the edge as well. They're like, look at him in his stupid fucking hat. I know, but see the edge. He plays the same guitar. I know, over and over. I know, but like the fuck, I, I don't think people don't, people don't chase the edge as much as they chase fucking Bono. There's something about Bono that just no, he brings everybody. 
he does bring it on himself, but he just rubs everybody the wrong way. Like he's one of those people that you could you could show a picture of him to a fucking caveman who's never seen him before, and they go, "Ugh, no like." Like there's just something. There's something yeah. smarmy and greasy about the fuck. Like he's just he's always open people's shit. You know what I mean? And he never he never has a Did stance you know, on anything. He apparently has the the rules of Bono. Have you heard about the rules of Bono? No. Bono sits down famous people at like award ceremonies and gigs mm-hmm. backstage wherever as as they're breaking, as they're getting famous. And it's this is notorious. Everybody Oh I heard this. he said this to fucking Kurt Cobain or something once. He sits them down and gives them the rules of Bono. The art, like how to deal, be nice, do don't say this, do this in the press, don't this and mm. that's how you survive stardom. Mm. Well some people think that it's the fucking most incredibly pretentious thing they've ever fucking heard. Other people are like, Oh yeah, um, like your man from the killers got the rules of Bono and he was like, Oh like, you see at the same time you can't say Famous people can't say shit about Bono. Of course they, they can't. can't. They're fucked if they do. Of like course. He's too big. He's too big. He's rock Jesus. He is rock Jesus. So when I was looking, I remembered that I went to the same school as you two. And um, I, was, I, I, was, I was reading it and I was like, fuck yeah, I actually kind of forgot about that. I went to the same secondary school as all of you two where the band formed. And um, then I remembered like, when I was, was in secondary school, like Bono was on the rugby team, and I remember like they used to have like rugby team photos um, on mm. the walls of the halls, and fucking there was one or two of them from the different years that had Bono in them. No, I didn't play rugby. I didn't fuck about rugby, but that was kind of mm. like the school sport or whatever. But when I oh. when I clicked on when I clicked on the it was Mount Temple was the school. When I clicked on Mount Temple's uh, uh, Wikipedia page, I came up with this list of like notable alumni, and I was breaking me bollocks laughing at, at the list of people. Like, there's a lot of people actually that came out of that school because it was really kind of an artsy farty yeah. music school. But aside from like mute, like everybody in U2, there was like a uh, fucking uh, Alan Avril from um, Primordial. Primordial. He came, and, um, and April Men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Dead um, Sovereign. Yeah. I actually know all his bands. Well, I like, his, I like all his bands. Yeah, like so he, he he was in Mount Temple. Um, Damien Dempsey came in Mount Temple. I didn't know that either. Um, Becky Jesus. Lynch, <laughs> Becky Lynch, the wrestler, came from there. Uh, someone else that I can't remember. This wrote, school is a fucking hit maker. That's hit what they maker. Like on, on the thing. But, um, <laughs> hit maker. My, my, fav- my favorite thing. <laughs> Scott Aiken Waterman's of school. <laughs> yeah. My favorite person that came out of the school. His name was Sean Asbitt, and he was Ireland's tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, he didn't have. He didn't have an article for me to click into because I really wanted to know how tall he is. I'm going to look that up later. Um, but Ireland's tallest man came from that skill as well. Actually, you know the first, we'd, the, find, we'd find a way to begrudge that as well. Oh, probably, probably. Yeah, look at him. Look at him up there. Look, look at him looking down on us. Yeah, look at him <laughs> in pain all the time. <laughs> There's gigantism screaming. Um, yeah. I was, uh, the first gig I ever played, the first band I was ever in, the first gig I ever played was actually in that skill, that talent show. And we played on Larry Mullen's drum kit that he donated to the skill, which is probably worth a fucking fortune now. He seems um, sound enough, Larry. Yeah, he just seems like a normal bloke. Like if you'd meet him yeah. in fucking Lidl, Buying chops, he's just a normal, normal bloke. They, definitely the most normal out of all of them, I think. Um, um, what's the English one called again? Uh, the one that looks like an artist, yeah. the bassist. Um, he looks fun. like he should be in Duran Duran. He yeah. always looks like he's no, he looks like he looks, he's always looked like he should be in Duran Duran now, as in he always looked older than the rest of them. Adam Clayton, Adam Clayton, yeah, he seems sound like he seems sound as well. Just, again, just a normal bloke. Bog standard fucking bloke. Now there's only been well you two you two had two other members, I didn't know this as well. The Edger's brother was in the band for a while. Um what the fuck was his name? The Corner. <laughs> Dick, Dick Dick Evans his name was. And uh and, yeah, another guy called fucking I don't know what his name was, something McCormick, Alan McCormick or something. Or Ivan McCormick, he was in the band for a while, but that was right. when they had different names. So they had two names before they were called U two. They were called Feedback and then they were called The Hype, and then they changed the name to U two. The hype, yeah. The hype. Oh, yeah. Sick in my mouth. But yeah, I, I don't get the hatred, really. Not not really for you two. Um, Listen, they the might Irish not be our favourite. We, like we, we do like to be good oh, things. Yeah, but but go to be honest them. with you, Bono really brings it on the rest of the he band. He does. The rest of the band are so rich, they don't give a fuck. Pretty much. A uh, fuck. One of them, the, the, the Bono lives out in Darky, doesn't he? Doesn't one of them live out in like Sutton, has like a lump of land out in Sutton somewhere. Maybe it's the edge. One of them has like a chunk of land on a beach. Like basically, it's entire an entire private beach, yeah. not basically in Dublin City, and I think he owns that. And this is weird. With little turrets, 
with turrets on the side of the that shoot is, iPods. I mean, shoot, shoot, shoot outdated iPods. <laughs> it doesn't even shoot iPods. It's when you walk by, it connects to their Wi-Fi and just throws albums onto your phone for you. Yeah. Just, that's their way of fucking hurting you. Uh, who is your next one? My next one is another... Another one I don't get myself at all. Phil Collins. Mm. People hate Phil Collins. They do hate, they hate Phil him. Collins. They hate his little face. They hate his little voice. They hate his little body. <laughs> yeah, it was, when you look at Phil Collins, I, I, I have a theory about Phil Collins, right? I have a theory about uh, Phil Collins from, from, from the 80s in particular. And it's only, it's only the theory is based in now. Okay, looking at classic photos of Phil Collins. And that is when you see classic photos of Phil Collins, including his album covers, where he's basically bald but holding on. And that hurts people. That hurts people. You know, if you've got a mate who's like down to like four or five wisps of hair and they still insist yeah. on like spiking up or something like that, and you're, you're like, like, let it go, man. Just but get the razor out. You, but if you have hair, you can't tell someone to let it go. It's weird. I do it all the time. And I, talk, I shaved my head the other day. I'm going to really reassess my situation here. Now, I'm going to ask three or four other people because I definitely have, like, hair body dysmorphia. Like, when I see my hair, I'm like, I'm going bald. I'm losing it. It's all, it's all gone. I've told you. I've told, I, 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 you know what I do? I'd say nothing. If you ask me, but I haven't said nothing. I said, no, you're all right. You've got, you've, honestly, you've got, re I've, I've, I've this left. five five years you've yeah. got to re- I, even re-evaluate the, I, this left. I have to I keep checking it. Left. I, I have to keep checking it. Because just it's in my head so that I have to keep checking it. But well, I have this thing. You <laughs> Um, but I have this thing about uh, I, I honestly believe that when people see pictures of Phil Collins they don't think of what Phil Collins looks like now where he just looks like a homeless man they think yeah. of because he, he yeah, does he's got the gruff beard yeah. and all that yeah, yeah. he full on looks like Phil Mitchell like he's full homeless like Phil Mitchell with an agony of vodka is the current yeah. Phil Collins but he's an edgier he's an edgier fucking Phil Collins he's supposed, there, supposed yeah. to be in bits as well isn't he like, he's, fucking, he's in pain when he plays and shit we, well, he doesn't play drums anymore. He retired from playing drums in 2009 yeah. because of uh, it just fucked his arms up. Yeah, he was playing using them weird sticks. I think we were talking about before as well. That turned, oh, his, yeah, yeah. turned your, your bones well, to show. You. He, he's uh, he's done two farewell tours, which is probably why some people. Let, let's just kind of dig into why. Mm. But first of all, the media do hate him. The media are always posting Phil Collins back again, big sigh or whatever like that. Mm. There was even a Change dot org petition to stop his Not Dead Yet tour. Bit mean, bit mean. Too he much. said in two, 2011. Uh, he was quitting music and that nobody would miss him. Don't do that, man. That's a bit Bill Huey. Yeah. Do uh. He, uh, he fa- okay, here's one story that came out about him that subsequently turned out to be not true. Colin, uh, Phil Collins faced a number of reports claiming he ended his marriage to a second wife via fax machine. Well, That's not what happened. What happened was he was only saying he couldn't get through to her on the phone, so he had to send her a text that said, this was before they knew they were breaking up or something like that. Listen, they were sorting stuff out, but some, someone just mm. found the facts or something like that. Um, he did a whole tax exile thing to Switzerland that people are not happy about. Like, but then, yeah. And he said at the same time, he's well, he hated the idea of a Labour government in, in England. And then people accused him of being a Tory. He was like, I'm not a Tory either. Mm. Um, he, he, he started to get around 2009 nine till do you know what it was I think it was when he said he couldn't play drums anymore people went oh deadly he's retiring and the papers were publishing finally Phil retires and he was like I'm retiring from drums not music you yeah. bastards mean. But, now, mean. But, now, but now that I know yeah. he even he, um, he said he does find it really really hard to uh, take sometimes he even emailed Jonathan Ross saying Jonathan why did they hate me really Jonathan Ross had no idea now I think it's one he be Genesis became too successful post mm. post breakup. Some people mm. like this, 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 very few people would care enough that he would be the guy seen as to sort of maybe broke up and mm. took the reins of Genesis. There's no way that is the reason that he's no, there. it's because he has sold so, like they sell like something like a hundred million albums or something like that. Mm. Genesis after 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 he after fucking Peter Gabriel left, mm. um, his music was played too much in the nineties, just too much. For a lot of people, yeah, take. it was everywhere. But, yeah, but so before I get into the next part, I don't have a problem with him at all. I think some of his songs are fucking shy, like really yes. shy. Yes. But also some of his bangers. There is a section of people in society and in the media who love him, and they are hip hop artists. Mm? Hip hop artists, uh, you're gonna love this, are absolutely and have always been absolutely champions of mm. Phil Collins. Weird. Like they love him. 
Um, Kanye West is a big fan. Ice T is a massive fan of Phil mm. Collins to the point where he was being interviewed by a journalist and he was going through Ice T's collection. He pulled out Phil Collins and the journalist was like, Phil Collins. He goes, Yes, so what? You got something to say to me? Yeah, exactly. Like, no, no, all right. Click. All good. <laughs> Um, songs like In the Air Tonight and Another Day in Paradise were sampled so much in the 90s mm. by rap artists that they decided to release an album called Urban Renewal in 2001. Mm. The Phil Collins tribute album wow. featuring Little Kim, Old Dirty Bastard, Pharrell, Pharrell Williams, Khalees, Montel Jordan and Brandy. Mad. You Mad. Have ODB, you have ODB doing su su studio. <laughs> I have to find that. I have to find that. That is, I don't know if that's on Spotify now. It won't be, but it might be, it might be on YouTube. We get lucky. I remember that Urban Renewal album coming out, and uh, like Phil Collins, like wrote the linear notes of it. Gone. I just uh, really want to also remind people that I, this wasn't my idea. These people seem to actually quite like my. It's not my idea. Don't hate me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's it, Phil. Do I hate Phil? No, absolutely not. No, oh, he seems like a nice guy. I'm looking for Urban Renewal on Spotify. I doubt it's there. I highly, highly doubt it. Montel Jordan. Montel Jordan's on it? Yeah. Jesus this Christ. This is how we do it. No, that's not him, is it? Uh, yeah. Yes. Dun, dun, it's Friday dun, dun, dun. Night, night and I feel all right. Exactly. Look him, Pharrell Williams, Khaleesi. So that's uh, that's old Phil. Like I said, he, he knows he's hated. The he Montel Jordan hated. song is on Spotify. The rest of it's not. Is it? Yeah. Um, much like Chris DeBorg and the rest of the people, he is very well aware. Uh, Chris DeBorg is so rich, he doesn't care. Phil Collins is rich, but also cares. Yeah, he, so, uh, it sounds like it. So who's, um, who's your next one? My, my next one is possibly one of the most hated groups in the world. Um, it's uh, the Insane Clown Posse. She's, yeah, people really, like, they're more, they're more mocked. Well, they were hated, now they're just mocked and hated. Yeah, they, they kind of became a joke. And um, yeah, so it's even worse. They're like, we saw when you're bullied for, like viciously, but then you yeah. just made a clown out of afterwards as well. Like, oh, forgot to yeah. both sides of that barrel. Um, now I picked the song Hocus Pocus off the Great Malenko, which is a great album. <laughs> um, this is the, the, the story behind this album is very really interesting, actually. They they were doing the rounds for fucking ages, for ages and ages and ages, and um, they start putting out their own stuff. They, they started off as pro wrestlers and they got yeah. sick of the internal politics of pro wrestling. So they decided just to become hip hop artists. And um, there's originally three of them, and one of them left. So uh, oh, I bet you wish he hadn't. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I think he maybe minted just, man. Oh, they're fucking proper minted. Um, they, they have that loyal fan base, don't they? They have, they have basically every incel in the world is a big fucking uh, <laughs> insane clown pussy fan. They're just the incel soundtrack. And um, so it started they in 19. Limp, they make Limp Bizkit look like dream theater. Very much so. Um, they started in 1989. And uh, this album, fucking the Hocus Pocus is on the Great Malenko. This was on uh, Disney Records. What? So they signed to like a major, a major label called like I think they were called like Hollywood Records or something like that. Yeah. And it was a subsidiary of Disney Records. And uh, when Disney went through the once they were handed the master tapes, Disney went through and said, "Well, there's three songs there that cannot come out. That cut those three songs, fucked them in the bin, and then they went back through." the rest of the album with a fine tooth comb and they made a load of lyric changes and said, you can't say that, you can't say that, you can't say that and released it. And the same thing was like, this is fucking bullshit, you're out editing us. And towards it, it's their biggest selling album, their best album across the board. You know what I mean? So they definitely needed, they needed like somebody micromanaging them to get the most out of Mickey them. Mouse knows best, man. Pretty much. Um, Mickey, always, always <laughs> trust the Mickey. Exactly. Just follow the Mickey. And um, so they... Uh, why are they hated? They're hated because they're fucking idiots. And they're hated because yeah. they dress up like clowns. And they're hated because their fans are fucking gobshites. Well, their and fans are like, like without, without trying to be classist, like their fans are proper, like what, what would be considered trailer trash in America. And also dr- the massive drug heads and yeah. worst tattoos, skinny uh, meth heads. Like they have, they do their own... Uh, they do, they do like a conven- or a festival or a convention. What's it called? The meeting of the juggalos or something like that. The meeting uh, of the juggalos. Yeah. The, the gathering of the juggalos. The gathering of the juggalos. That's the one that's held every year. And that started off. I, in I would Ohio. go. To I would go in a harpy. In a harpy. And I think do you know what I'd say. I'd end up going every year. It would be like WrestleMania for fucking gobshites, and I'd be mad. At Apparently, them. it's lawless. Like. 
that apparently the whole idea behind it is that they rent private land. There's, a, there's about three documentaries online. You'll find them on YouTube. I watched most of them. And what they do is they rent private land. They don't, like, they don't rent like a convention center or a mm-hmm. fucking, you know, uh, the tree arena or anything like that. They rent a big, giant couple of acres of private land off some farmers. and say, listen, we're going to be here for a week. And you just can't be here. We're going to have security. We're going to have fucking everything, medics, the whole shebang. But like, you cannot be here. You can't come down. You can't look. Like, it's private entry only. Like, if you want to come in, you have to buy a fucking ticket. No, less. And they just go fucking bananas. There's gangbangs yeah. in corners. There's fucking open air drug markets. There's, you name it. And there's pro wrestling, there's gigs, there's like fucking like ATV trials, fucking mountain biker, like whatever you can think of. It's like there. Amsterdam seemed like dream theater. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think because they, Jesus, they have such a fucking interesting take on things where I, I, I was reading, they started off doing gangster rap, right? These fucking three white boys. Yeah white lads started off doing gangster rap and apparently they met up with um, they finally met up with a fellow we've talked about a lot in this podcast Isham who was he'd be like the godfather of Detroit hip hop yeah. and they sat down with Isham and they were like listen like fucking this gangster rap thing isn't working for us and he said like gangster rap's not going to work in Detroit like that's LA like LA is for gangster rap like New York is for fucking kind of rough street drug dealing rap like gangster rap who's shooting people that's Los Angeles man we have to do it differently here so do what I do do this acid rap where we talk about doing drugs and fucking you know being chased by the fucking cops and whatever you know and do it all kind of weird and kind of left the field so they were like all right, let's do that so they kind of shook hands with Isham and said right well let's push forward with this acid rap style for Detroit and we'll leave behind the, the kind of gangster nonsense so that's when they start getting real fucking big real big now they had this feud. This feud is fucking brilliant. They had a feud with Eminem that lasted for fucking years. Years and years. Like, it literally only went away about fucking 10 years ago. There's the cops. No the cops. The popo. The fucking filth. Talk about well, the inside. The they only you're talking about insane club. club exactly, club. yeah. Because um, originally they were originally called like, the Inner City Pussy when they were gangster rappers. And they changed their name to the Insane oh, Clown Pussy. Yeah. And, um, but they had this mad row with fucking Eminem and the reason they had a mad row with Eminem they was did, because yeah. when Eminem here's another cop car now come on you bastards who is after down my road my little tiny road Jesus I can see them at the window that's road. three cop cars and an ambulance have to go and buy that's the dogs geez. yeah fucking fucking inner city pussy lads there's another one four cop cars and an ambulance someone oh, having a party shit. um it's heading towards well, East Ball. Really? That's normal. For an, no, for an um, ambulance for a party? I don't know. Someone not socially distancing or something. Who knows? Jesus. But they're heading down towards uh, the point. Well, there won't be the point. They go to the keys. So I don't know where they're going. East Ball, anyway. Um, down to the Little. Someone's breaking the two-meter lion outside the Little. Um, no, that's that's Tala, your grand. What yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they had a fight with Eminem the last years, and the reason they had it was because... Um, Eminem was launching his first EP, the Slim Shady EP. Now, this is pre-Dr. Dre. This is, this is going to be the record that got the attention of Dr. Dre and uh, yeah. Jimmy Iovine and all this kind of shit. Um, he was handing out flyers in this club. And there's a little club called, uh, I think it's called St. Andrews in Detroit. I, was, I, I went there a couple of times myself. And uh, so they have hip-hop gigs. They have pro wrestling. I actually saw the insane claim posse wrestle in St. Andrews in Detroit once, which was mad. Really? Um, yeah, it was fucking mental. I had to go. I was there and I saw a poster. So, you know, Clown, they had their own wrestling promotion for years called Insane Clown Wrestling or something. ICW. Clever name. Yo, yeah, they're, they're, they're smart lads. And um, so I said, fuck, we have to go. So we went and I stood there like a fucking prick watching uh, it's the Insane Clown Pussy lads wrestle against old ECW guys like Sabu and all. And then little did I know, a few years later, I'd be kicking Sabu out with my own pub. But anyway. Where Liverpool I, had him. Where Liverpool had him. That luckily found the bin. But yeah. he, Eminem was there and he was handing out flyers for his uh, EP lunch, which is going to be in St. Andrews. Um, St. Andrews, St. Mark's, St. Andrews. He was handing out his flyers, that, his gig that was going to be a week later. And on the flyer, it said, um, featuring in St. Clown Posse. And he handed one of the flyers to the lads from St. Clown Posse. <laughs> and they were like, you know, I'm in the St. Clown Posse. And he went, oh, for real, yeah? He goes, uh, you coming? He says, well, it says I'm fucking on it. He goes, yeah, well, you might come then. He goes, but I'm not, I'm not coming, you stupid cunt. Well, yeah, you don't advertise in your gig without an aim on it, like. No one knows anything about this gig. And yeah. he reading through and also said, like, featuring Esham, featuring Kid Rock, 
and, and he was like, does any of these other lads know that you're that you're using their name? And he goes, eh. if you build it, they will come. Yeah, exactly. but that's what he was doing. <laughs> he was just telling people that like the fucking building blocks of all of the Detroit hip hop. We're going to be at this gig supporting Eminem. So that's, that's how a real, got us. That's a real which came first, the chicken or the egg. Who said yeah. they were going to go first before yeah. someone else went, oh, we are gone. That's clever. Now, Everyone's sp- going to be there, man. That's, that's the way you get people to a party. Exactly. Gonna- now, speaking of, uh, you just spoke about old dirty bastard. I can connect the two. Go on. Well, here it is. So the ICP put together this album and they used some of the money they got from Disney. And they wanted to put together this album. And they wanted to get all their favorite fucking hip hop stars out of it. So they wanted like Snoop Dogg and Ice T and all this kind of shit. So uh, Snoop Dogg wanted 50 grand, I think. Was it 50 grand or 5 grand? No, it was cheap. It was like 5 grand for a verse. Yeah. 5 grand <coughs> for a verse. ODB wanted 6 and Ice T done it for 3 because he liked them. Oh. And uh, so apparently Snoop Dogg rocks up fucking bleedly, 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 does a fucking verse, fucks off. Ice T shows up bleedly, bleedly, bleedly. Does verse fucks off. ODB shows up and spends three days just shouting the word bitches into the microphone. Out of his fucking biscuit. Just absolutely manic on drugs. Just roaring and shouting and screaming. Absolute mumbles. And apparently it took them like four weeks to take all the recordings they'd made of ODB and edit it down into four lines to make a rough verse out of it before they could release it. Jesus. Yeah, good old, old ODB. Dirty bastard. He, uh, he always brings. Now it was thirty. Yeah, it was thirty grand. Sorry, thirty grand to ODB, and it was twenty grand for uh, for Snoop Dogg, and like ten for 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 I actually wrote that down. I was wondering. I was like, that's I, I could get them for that. We could make our own song now with them. Very Not much. Now. Yeah, very much. Not ODB, ODB getting them. We'd be, we'd be yeah, so but, but I really do think I think that ICP have they're hated because if you don't go into the music and loads of the music is actually very good. They're, they're actually talented. Um, the guys can rap on their play production. they all that stuff, though? Do they write yeah. the music? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, they have an in-house production team as well, but yeah, yeah, they're all involved in, yeah. in it. Um, they, they, they have two or three producers that are part of that um, Hatchet Records, because they have their own record label. Um, yes. And their record label is actually, if you go back through the history of who they've released, they, they have an eye for talent. They really do have an eye for talent. They, they put out some fucking fantastic releases. Um, but mm. unfortunately, everybody who is associated with Hatchet Records, gets associated with ICP, and nobody really <laughs> wants that rub after a while. Um, yeah. So they're, they're, they're a joke, but they're, they a are talented, a joke. they're a talented fucking joke. The fact mm. that these, these lads are probably in their 50s now, painting their faces like fucking like sh- clowns, and they have all these 20-year-old meth heads following them around, like, whoop, whoop, fam, and throwing fucking Fago soda. Fago soda is fucking delicious. Don't be wasting it. And it's hard to get everywhere else in the world. It's fucking delicious. I don't be know what that is. Fago is like a club orange. It's like a brand um, from Michigan of like just soda pop, like minerals. Nice. I can't, I, but tin, they do like a thousand a flavors. Tin of minerals. Exactly, tin of minerals. And um, they have like a thousand flavors and they're all fucking delicious, which you can only mm-hmm. really get them in, 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 kind of in the Michigan area. Um, so part of the IC, of ICP's thing is that they have these giant bottles of Fago and they spray the crowd with them and they write songs about Fago and it's fucking absolutely fucking will not go if they're going to spray sticky shit on me <coughs> yeah like that shit. that's their fucking thing the kind of gore and they actually doing a lot of gigs with gore as well but that was the uh, ICP who's your next one uh, James Blunt <laughs> this lad gets this lad gets slated like hard yeah. hard slated like proper fucking like he always has and like when I first heard that song you know beautiful I was like that is gash this yeah. is a terrible song like it's really it's it's I'm fixing my headphones just so we can really listen in on my own voice with this one <laughs> <laughs> he it's I hated that song when it first came out and I went to, obviously straight to number one mm. I find like all of his music actually incredibly dull uh, singer songwriter pop kind of just throwaway crap but it's, it's also here's the here's the two things i hate most about it though the lyrics are so that like the direct way to write lyrics like yeah i was walking down the road i saw did, 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 real basic and as well as that he sounds miserable and a little yes. bit posh um paul <laughs> weller once said that he would rather eat his own shit than share a stage with him really which was very harsh i think he's heard may have apologized that later um james blunt was a recon officer in the lifeguard regiment of the british army hmm. so his reconnaissance is like obviously when you go and try and get intel on the enemy i don't know how that would have worked <laughs> yeah like a scout yeah and the lifeguard isn't like 
anything to do with, as far as I know, nothing to do with the sea or anything mm. like that. Lifeguard is just a name of a British regiment. So what you're saying is that if there is a row between James Blunt and Paul Weller, James Blunt's going to fuck up Paul Weller. Well, he probably already knows where Paul Weller lives. He's More than likely. Officer. I know a fella who was in uh, Paul Weller's house. Yeah? Mm. I wonder what Paul Weller's like. He's all well, right. No, he's not nice to James Blunt. James Blunt seems like... Here's what James Blunt did, which is the classic manoeuvre. Just fucking wear it like a jacket. Just stick yeah. that jacket on yeah. and wear it. So he, got, he goes on Twitter and he constantly, constantly retweets the negative and horrible shit people say. Deadly. And applies to them with quite funny stuff. And he posts stuff <laughs> every now and then like, uh, good news, folks, I uh, won't be releasing an album this year. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he do a quarantine one as well? He did it because, lads, uh, just, I know everyone's feeling a bit bad or whatever during the quarantine, so I'm just letting you know that I'm not going to be doing a quarantine video. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to be live streaming like everybody else. So he's embraced it. Like, <laughs> but, uh, Very he cool. Hasn't embr- but he hasn't done it in a way. Like, you know, some people go, yeah, yeah, and they join in the joke, but you can still see them like seething and not getting it. Yeah, he doesn't do that. He doesn't, he seems, he doesn't seem to see. He's 46. Fuck off. No, I found that weird. Yeah, 46. So he, he would have been like... Jeez, when did that? Like 2002 or three. Now, Back to Bedlam was his big album. It still stands as the best-selling album of all of the 2000s in the UK. Fucking hell. I just looked him up. He's That's got nine insane. albums. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I think he sold, I think he's sold about 20 million, and I think eight of them were the first album. The rest of them were the other nine trying to make yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so right. I have absolutely no interest in listening to James Blunt. I do no. find his music annoying, but I do find it weird that, like, David Gray got away with it. Yeah, but and David loads, Gray had a bit of edge. Had a little bit of edge to him. Bit, yeah. You know, all the yeah. electronic bits and stuff like that, you know? Blunt's just him with a guitar. I think his You're Beautiful was hit, that was his Lady in Red. If you hit people wrong, especially like if they have to listen to that one around holiday, especially the English yeah. people come like going, oh, for fuck's sake, not his fucking f- map it again. Yeah, but then the other ones are going to... Beautiful. The other, yeah, the other ones are going to be like, that's our song, isn't it? Oh, it's our song. It's our song. And they're like, yeah. yeah, babe, it's our song. Babe. Yeah, babe, it's our song. Yeah, get curry in, song. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, no, like, I honestly don't have any issue with James Bond because I am able to avoid him. Mm. And I'm sure if I met him... Yeah, his image change came with, with basically him going, yeah, man, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, yeah, I'm shy. Yeah, shy, I'm not, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. minted. I'm not oh, sure. of course he is. Because it's just him, isn't it? You know, you start you start having yeah. to do extra work when there's like four or five people in the band. It's just him. And lighting engineers and, and yeah. pyrotechnics. I yeah. doubt he has any of that. No, I he listened doesn't. to a few, few of his other songs and he tried to do like sort of semi electronic stuff with pop, real pop stuff. I was like, mm. this lad is actually shy at music. Like yeah, shite. yeah. Or also, maybe he's very good at it because he gets it sold. Uh, that's James Blunt. Mm. No, 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 do I deserve anything he deserves to hate? Not really. No, no, it's just James Blunt. Who's sums them up. One? My next one is Kid Rock. Yeah, people do hate that cunt. They do hate him. Uh, <laughs> I picked Bar with the Bar. Uh, the reason I picked that, that song, bar with the, bar, the, bang, the Bang, the Bang, Diggy. Yeah. The only reason I picked that song, I'll be brutally honest with you, is because the intro is absolutely outrageously good. Once he starts, this was for the fucking something with the don't have any dancer, find, that can I fuck off. That, I find that about Kid Rock. He starts songs very well, then yeah. you're like, oh, turn this off now. He's got a little, he has a little like, machine Smith, in his head. Smithers, turn this off now. Exactly. <laughs> he's got a little machine in his head that can pump out savage music. Music. But like, lyrically, you know, and like, his vocals are just, bleh. Now, here's oh, a yeah, fact. He's shy. He's shy, yeah. Here's a fact. He hasn't rapped on an album since 2003. What is he doing on a plane? He's to singing. He's singing. He went down this kind of a... Uh, rebel country kind of thing now bear in mind uh, he's from detroit as well right he's is from he, detroit yeah is he's he from, fuck? i thought he was from fucking the midwest or no something. I don't know. he is from that he's detroit as fuck right detroit as fuck or and, uh, i thought he was proper no but well, this is a big thing because for fucking years he was going around with the with the bleeding uh southern flag with the rebel flag yeah. uh, uh, like as a backdrop and um, for his gigs and uh, he, he stopped doing it years ago. He had to put out a statement saying, "No, I never done it with, with, a, with hate in my heart." You know, I love America. You know, and I, you know, I, lo- I love the South and I lo- all this type of shit. Because when he was starting yeah. to do, you know, put out that song out, "Cause I Want to Be a Cowboy," fucking shit. Cowboy um, baby. Yeah, yeah. Now the re- he's hated because he's probably shy, right? And he's so far up his own hole. 
that it's painful. And he's also an abusive bastard. He's like he's been arrested. Fuck, he must have been arrested 20 times for battering women, battering Gosh, blokes, Ross. battering fucking children, whatever. Whatever it takes, he'll bash you. He's just, he's just one of them people. He's just a basher. Um, he looks like he looks like he could absolutely take him with one punch. He looks like a fucking meth head. I think he might have been at one stage. Um, what I what I also found out about, even though he's from like outside Detroit, right? He's not from Detroit City. He his family are rich as fuck. His father owned a chain of uh, uh, car dealerships, and. Uh, in an interview, they asked him, you know, what's your favourite memory of the childhood? And it was like, oh, you know, I used to love going into the orchard and picking apples and bringing them into the stable for the horses. And I was like, what? His, his own orchard, his own His horses. own orchard and his own stable full of his own horses. And he got, um, he got interested in hip-hop. And he went there. His whole, how he kind of got famous was that he used to DJ and rap at the same time. And he'd show up and he'd start like DJing with like Public Enemy and all the, and Esham and fucking all these guys that were in, in Detroit. And he kind of got famous. Now, what's weird is that he was famous. Um, he was probably the first white rapper. He was before Vanilla Ice. He was like, he had a record really? deal. Yeah, yeah. He had a record deal and everything before Vanilla Ice. But before his albums came out, um, Vanilla Ice broke and none of the record labels wanted to touch him because Vanilla Ice was being kind of shot on from a height by the hip-hop community. Yeah. Everybody was waiting for the great boy hope for hip-hop and they thought it was going to be fucking Kid Rock and then Vanilla Ice came along with the money behind them and exploded and it was done. We talked about Vanilla Ice a couple of weeks ago how he was yes. kind of massively mishandled, like a fairly talented bloke as well, but was massively mishandled and kind of, it was given uh, people to dress him up and this is how you do your hair and we're going to do this to your makeup, yeah. this is how you have to talk. All this, they basically just moulded him into this fucking creature and uh, Kid Rock was the opposite of that but he was still white. So the hip hop community wanted nothing to do with him because all they could talk about was Vanilla Ice. Um, yeah, and, and it's weird that like Kid Rock is also from Detroit. Yeah, I wonder is uh, I wonder is him and Eminem ever talked? I don't know. Like, I think they knew each other. Okay. Eminem opened up um, for him at a bunch of times. They know each other years. I know that much. And oh, both of them, right. both of them are on the Insane Clown Pussy's flyer um, as being <laughs> advertised for playing with Eminem. The, the best um, gig that never happened because yeah, it was exactly. never booked. Um, he was sued. He was sued by a bunch of circuses years ago for naming his tour the greatest show on earth. So like the ringing, ringing circus, and like the P.T. Barnum circus, and all went after him and sued him into fucking oblivion. They were like you can't, Jesus. mate, you can't, like you yeah, just like, can't. I'm, I'm mates with a lot of clowns. I played at one of their gigs with Eminem. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Holy shit. I'll get them boys in to do a gig for you. Um, but th- what I will say is that th- the only reason I put him on this list is because from reading about him, and uh, like, I have that fucking Rebel Without Cause album somewhere here. I bought it when, I, when it came out because of that bar with a bar song and a bunch of other stuff that, that I was into when I was a kid. But I, c- I can say one thing for Kid Rock, and that is that he 100% does his own thing when he feels like it. So he done like the classic fucking, like his whole thing was that he considered himself to be half Run DMC, half ACDC. That was the way he's, he he's always... He's good mates Run DMC, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was always on that show, Rev Run. Which that's right. I watched, I watched two episodes of that and was like, fuck me, imagine watching any more of that show. <laughs> exactly, imagine. He bought, he bought, he bought the Reverend's son a guitar. Something like that, yeah. He's, he, he seems to be favorably looked upon by everybody, by the people he's battering, obviously. Um, yeah. Like he was married to Pamela Anderson for like a year. That's right. Um, he actually went out with her. He went out with her like for fucking a year or two, ten years before they got married as well. So he, he does have a history with her. Um, yeah, he's been, he's done for bashing somebody in a fucking chip shop or something, and then uh, he had to close. He opened he up a lot of restaurants. Someone in a, chi- in a chip shop in or a chipper. Battering yeah. someone in a chipper just gets you a name for yourself. Exactly. Um, but he, he done something g- gammy like that and then he had to close down. He, he has these bunch, he has some fucking restaurant called like Kid Rock's Kick-Ass Honky Tonk or something like that. You know, something disgusting. Jesus. Yeah. You know, Kenny Rogers had one of them Kenny Rogers chicken. Yeah. I, I'll never understand that. But uh, he, Funny 100%, chicken, he does his own thing. So now he's doing these kind of country albums with like a little bit of kind of electronic influence. He was doing his kind of metal stuff for a while at the start. It was all hip hop. He done some acoustic stuff. He 100%, like he's an artist. Like, and he's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I t- I, yeah, when, when I looked at his history, like I, I wouldn't have thought this. Like I just, I thought like, Kid Rock's just WWF music, you know what I mean? That's the way I always looked at it. Because he did, yeah. he actually wrote songs for them, um, 
he's done a bunch of wrestlers in entrance music for them as well. No, like I figured there'd be more going on than what's on the outside. What we get, you see, in Ireland we get like yeah, but when when I look at like, like when I look at his his fourth album coming out in the fucking eighties, and it being this kind of kind of eighties fucking street hip hop style thing, and then eventually evolving into that kind of rock metal rap amalgamation, and then eventually turning into this kind of Country, like rebel country thing and now he's doing this this kind of like like you said kind of Kenny Rogers-esque kind of fucking ballady type of stuff like he's just he's going where he thinks the music has taken him and did he skip dubstep though yeah, he, he did, hopefully he did but what I like about it is that he didn't just keep banging out fucking there's no like bar with a bar two or three or four you know what I mean there's no fucking I want to be a cowboy six seven and eight mm. he, he kept it moving and in that regard he, like, the fucking whether you like it or not he's pushing himself forward and he's constantly putting out new albums, constantly putting out new music. He's not content to just sit in his fucking hole. And so that's mm. enough for me. That's 100% enough for me. Uh, who was your next one? My next one is the silliest band of an already silly genre. Okay. It's Limp Bizkit. Oof. Oof. Um, they're also the most hated band in an already hated genre. Yeah. Limp Bizkit. Um, <laughs> Jesus, yeah, people don't just hate Fred Durst, they hate Limp Bizkit. they hate the whole idea of Limp yeah. and what Limp Bizkit stand for, which was like the final nail in the coffin for classic rock and metal. Yeah. So at the time, it just, it, it, you had to duck away from when mid to early 2000s to yeah. like late, late, like 99 to 2005. Five, yeah. New metal was killing it, just killing it. Yeah. Left, right, and center. And the reason that I think people hate Limp Bizkit is because they were the biggest band in it. Yeah. Apart from Corn, but that's arguable. We'll get onto that later, I'm sure. Yeah. Um they were overly wiggerish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The lyrics the fucking garbage. The literally the worst lyrics imaginable. Yeah. Um even among people that love new metal, there was people that love new metal that hated Limp Bizkit. Yeah. Like with a passion. They were too popish and they were too kind of too cartoonish for them. Yeah. I like Limp Bizkit because I buy into the cartoon. Yeah, but completely. Yeah, like they're, they're a super talented band, but their fans again are awful. And they're ones with awful fans as well. Oh, you don't I know. I don't know any of their fans. Like I know people no, who like in them. America, like the frat. Oh, boys maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. the frat boys with the tribal tattoos and even the kind of <laughs> baseball jerseys. Not baseball jerseys. The it's basketball just, jerseys. No, no, baseball. Boys. They had the baseball jerseys and the baseball caps, yeah. and then they, they had the basketball vests as well. But the baseball jerseys were button up ones. Um, they were mad for them. Yeah, they were killed. Cool. Like, like the, they had like a big frat boy f- college following. Which, of course, they did. As as a, as a band that were like top of the metal and rock charts, was pissing rockers off. Left, right, and center. I always remember frat, when, when frat that, boys are the opposite of like rockers. Exactly. I always remember when Break Stuff came out, and fucking everybody lost their shit because nobody really so knew. Good. It's a great song, but nobody fucking knew. Um, skin your ass raw with a chainsaw all this type and everyone was like what's this joint this is mad <laughs> and then and then they were huge and the garbage yeah, continued overnight. but the songs got better and then fucking yeah, they, did, yeah. they did and then fucking um, Chocolate Stardust uh, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavor of Water came out and everyone was like that's, the that sh- that's fucking amazing the album the production on the album like yeah. that must have won awards because it's one of the cleanest sounding albums for a heavy album ever made I must pick that up on CD because it is it's fun it's it's like I nearly, I, I nearly paid a hundred quid Freddy for it. Fingered. Yeah, I nearly leg, paid or, or? on vinyl a hundred quid for it on vinyl there two years ago. Nearly came close, fairly close. I bought oh, significant other. I bought significant other yeah. for fifty quid. Um, but if I ever see um fucking hot dog water, I I'd definitely buy it. Yeah, like one of the reasons that like I I already mentioned the metal elitist will use them um, at Lincoln Park as the whipping boys for how shit new metal period was mm. and they're glad when it died out like less than to, to I think seven or eight years was new metals kind max, of yeah. max stretch yeah. maximum stretch and yeah. um, they played Woodstock 99 Limp Bizkit, and that was when people really sort of associated them with having shitty fans which yeah. is you can take or leave because the the, the ripping up the floorboards and starting mm. the words happened while they were playing break stuff Mm. So people actually started break stuff, mm. and uh, then after the gig, there was like reportedly loads of sexual assaults. After that, so yeah. that was real bad news for them. Um, him himself has been known as just a fucking brain dead moron, but he's not. He's a very super clever guy. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Actually. He knows how to how to fucking advertise. Yeah. He put a sex video on Allo. Um, it's a sex he, tape out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched his film. He re- re- released a film, The Fan, with uh, John Travolta. As John a, Travolta, yeah. Is playing someone with a, what looks like a bad attempt at some sort of a stand, Aspergers or something yeah. though. But like, like what I mean is like what someone that doesn't know anything about Aspergers would would imagine mm. some of what Asperger's has and then made a movie about it in a sort of derogatory in way. I don't know. It's Jesus, that movie the fan is, is so bad. So Yeah, so I, I read it's not I read a review. Film either. No, he's done something else. I read a review of the fan and they were like uh, like it's this this might be like a very avant garde post modern art. It's so terrible. Yeah. They were like it's it's, it's so really terrible cool. that like it might have done it might have created something new. Well speaking about new and terrible art um, he went out with Britney Spears for a while and I think she mm. broke his heart uh, they were working in the studio together on uh, in, what he would consider what he did consider Porter's Head style tracks imagine imagine the hell that we would have been put through had, if, if they had got ahead yeah so he uh, is, yeah he wrote in his song um, Just Drop Dead he wrote about like being with a girl who went out with someone else and he admits that it's about her and he was talking to his fans on his fan page about like being really into Britney Spears and all. I'm sure they were like yeah man it's going to be alright so oh. <laughs> him and Britney oh. yeah Doris said that he, um, he didn't allow Britney Spears to release them songs on her label because she denied they had a personal relationship really so that's, that's not child, childish at all or that's ridiculous yeah if you don't admit that we were together you're not having them songs Mad, that's fucking mad. Um, that's mad. I would actually like to hear them. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure some of them songs came out with Britney, on Britney Spears' record. It might got like remixed and chopped up in the years there. Yeah, not with him on um, them, obviously. No, he's no, he no, he was just uh, producing them. I think. Yeah, okay. or just guiding her, like writing, the, yeah. writing the beats. Even though, yeah, it's not why he done that, but yeah. No, I don't think he did. At all. No. Um, another one of the reasons is they released shy album after shy album after yeah. I was born and left. Yeah, there was a, they kept letting people down, and then even their own fans were like, oh, "This is bullshit." Yeah, they also held an audition for a guitarist. In, That's right. Um, in a really lame sort of publicity stunt, yeah. I think it's and, terrible. Um, yeah, and apparently those people had to bring their own riffs, and yep. Limp Bizkit get got to keep them riffs if they were going to be yep. used. That they made an people. album. They made an album out of riffs that the guitarist gave them while auditioning to be in uh, Limp Bizkit. It's disgusting. Jesus fucking disgusting Christ. they all had to sign a uh, waiver saying that they couldn't do Limp Bizkit yeah. covers or any covers they had to show up with new material if possible full songs and um, perform in front of members of the band or their management and they held them in guitar centres all over America and they got to keep bad all of it news. Mm. bad news and I don't think that album well presumably that album wasn't particularly good Who knows? That, song, the, that song The Truth was alright that came out during that period mm. um, look that was fucking Limp Bizkit people mm. hate Metalers hate them. People yep. that are not into metal at all hate them because they hate the idea of them. Jock rock, whatever the fuck you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rape music, <laughs> according to a <laughs> <of> people. <laughs> fucking hell! <laughs> like, Jesus like they, they ruined uh, they ruined red hats forever until fucking Donald Trump got a hold of them anyway and yeah. kept kept the, people, the, the trend up. People will associate them with like those disgusting fans and stuff like that but yeah that's uh, that's Limp Bizkit mm. um, I'm, I'm I'm staying in the same the vein one? I'm staying in the same vein and a band you just mentioned I picked Corn. 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 yeah do people hate Corn? they do yeah because. yeah but in particular Metalheads um, I think Metalheads hate Corn more than they hate Limp Bizkit because Limp Bizkit had at least another genre for people to pick on so the Metalheads and the rappers both picked on on Limp Bizkit but like the Metalheads went after Korn because it was just I I don't know how I feel about Korn I picked this song Got The Life because I really like this song, um, song yeah. uh, but I never I was mad into all that Limp Bizkit and Deftones and all that fucking Linkin Park and I loved all that shit when it was out you know because it was kind of new and fresh and, and the riffs were great let's be honest yeah like it was all recorded well all this type of shit and the riffs were savage and the, the videos were always cool and you could get their stuff you know it wasn't like it was super underground you could walk into any shop and get it you know which was a big deal when you're a young teenager but car never and never done anything for me and it wasn't because they were too heavy because that i was listening to heavier stuff Um, i couldn't there was something about the way fucking davy sang something about that fucking 
uh, that fucking that shy just bothered me bothered me like it always like as I got older I kind of realised that they kind of kind of like synonymous with kind of mall core metal heads you know like little yeah. hot topic um, girl, girls in particular it was de- de- I definitely knew fellas that were into corn but I definitely knew more girls that were into corn and yeah. I think corn are probably, and there's no, no, nothing wrong with this at all, but corn are almost certainly responsible for a lot of like kind of Depeche Mode goth women that are in their 30s now. Most certainly would have been their entryway drug. Um, yeah, goth, goths are into corn actually. Yeah. Because they have that, they have to use a lot of electronics. Exactly. In the right, in the right way, but they use it in a dark and creepy yeah, way. Yeah, it's dark music, everyone's down tuned, it's all rumbling and clunky. Um, yeah, man, that I hate it. I hate it, you know. Like if you listen to the start of Falling Away from Me, mm. that those kind of notes could be any got song. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and there's, industrial, there's, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's loads of that there. It's just the, the kind of the dark imagery, the bladdery fucking lyrics. Like a, they're like a metal version of the Insane Clown Posse. They look fucking mad looking as well, the dreadlocks and the fucking... Yeah. Kind of, Adidas tracksuits. Yeah, Adidas tracksuits and worn out t-shirts and everybody's playing real low. Um, like to the ground as well as tuned. Um, there was just something very peculiar about them. They were almost, they were almost proggy is the wrong word, but let's say advanced for that style of music. They're also responsible yeah. for for uh, Limp Bizkit, um, if I remember correctly. Um, they met Fred Durst in Florida or something, and he gave them a demo, and they got behind them, and I think they might have paid for the recording of the first album. Uh, so Corn are kind of responsible for. Uh, Limp Biscuit, but that's mad. Yeah, what I will say, and I have to say this, is that <laughs> for a couple of albums there, they were incredibly good at what they done. That style of music, it was often duplicated, but nobody ever came close to doing no, it's, what yeah, they it's, done. No one really sounds like Corn, even when no. they tried to add kind of like, like the, groove that Corn yeah, had. Yeah, nobody ever like the, came Death close. Had, had groove, but they're in a different. A different stratosphere of, of yeah. music, really. Like you had, like it's, no, no, it's not of music, but it's it's totally different. Like it is. Like you had bands like Coal Chamber and stuff that they tried to have a crack at it. Yeah. Um, that they were trying to mix up kind of weed zombie and corn, and it's never took off. Never took off. Actually, there's there's a great fucking story about Coal Chamber. Uh, um, Coal Chamber were doing a tour with the Insane Clown Pussy, and um. ICP kicked them off the tour after a couple of gigs because so many people saw Cold Chamber and asked for refunds after the gig. They were like, "Get, well, I want me fucking money back!" Like, I'm after sitting through 40 minutes of this absolute garbage, I want me money back. So yeah. ICP had to kick them off the tour, and uh, Cold Chamber's manager was Sharon Osborne. Oh they, yeah, that's yeah. right. They uh, they had a big row. The ICP and Sharon Osborne had this massive row where they used to ring into some radio station. Like both of them would ring yeah. in, and fucking whoever was hosting the radio radio show would have to like kind of uh, be the judge, the adjudicator in this in this thing. And there was a mm-hmm. bet. Um, I think Sharon Osborne bet like fucking fifty grand that they wouldn't that ICP wouldn't sell twenty thousand copies of their next album, which and was a bad bet. Bad bet. I'm pretty sure they fucking they 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 lashed that over. But whether it was ever finalized, I don't know. But then Sharon Osborne said she was going to sue ICP for breach of contract, and that Cold Chamber were owed uh, it was twelve and a half grand for every well, gig that they didn't play on this tour until the completion of the tour. Turned into a whole big clusterfuck. But anyway, Corn, listen, they're one of a kind. Yeah. I can't. Why they hate it so much? I don't know. Um, I think they might have been just not the easy entry music. That people, people don't like uh, Jonathan Davis with his oh, "Are you ready?" Mm. Get that gets the piss taken out of it a lot. But yeah, I agree. I, well, I, I, I'm still a fan of Corn. I still like them. Yeah, I, again, I don't hate them. There's not, not my favorite band. I never understood the hatred, and I pro- I'm probably one of them people that gave them a fucking hard slagging, like a hard slagging, um, on many occasions. But I don't. I, now I look at it now in the clear, cold light of fucking day. Don't understand yeah. it. I don't understand the hatred. You know, there's definitely other bands that deserve to be fucking yeah. hated, you know? Because um, I, I was going to pick someone like Green Day. I was like, you know what? Like, could you be honest? Too easy. Too easy. It's, Although it's, a, lot of these are, a lot of these are too easy. Yeah, they? a lot of them are easy. But like, someone like Green Day is just low-hanging fruit. Like, you know what I mean? It really mm. is. And um, there's no point going after them. And I can defend, I can defend Green Day's first couple of albums and I can't defend the last few of them. 
you know, the last 15, 20 years worth of them. I can't yeah. do that. But I can, I can defend the ones before it. But uh, Green Day done absolutely nothing new style-wise whatsoever. They just made the same music everybody else in 1992 was making. And that's fine. Mm. But at least Korn fucking channeled something and bore through with their own fucking, their own sound. Um, who's your next one? My next one is a very obvious one, but I want to get into it real quickly. Also, it felt wrong to leave them off, and that's a cold play. Mm. People, hold, people hold cold Kate hate play. People hate cold play. And uh, I actually hate them. And yeah. I used to, but I do it now. Like, I think I've, I've possibly mentioned it on the podcast before that um, I, I hate everything they've become. I yeah. gave them, I, like, when I say I used to like cold play, we both liked that first album. Mm. Yeah, but what I'm what I found was we're really just giving it a pass. I think so. Yeah, I don't know whether I liked it, liked it, but like I definitely like. Yeah, I I let it away with it, like. But uh, like people go around wearing t-shirts that say "Call Player Shit." Yeah, that's all the point. That's the that's point? a bit silly. <laughs> I wouldn't like, do it myself. Um, they became too big too quick. So the first yeah. album got too big, and the first album is not particularly bad. Little album full of singer songwriter songs turned into a band. Type it's got yellow and all on it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, good I song. Think, I don't care. I like that song. No, I like that song. I can take or leave their second album. I know some people like it. I, Which I was the second know. album? Oh, I don't is that know. Parachutes? Fucking, no, Parachutes is no. the fourth album. Uh, is it? The second one is something about birds. X, Y, Z or something. Science Clockhead. I don't know, fucking yeah. know what the fuck that is. Uh, look it the up sci- now. The, the Science of Brains or some shit. Something bullshit. I don't like know. that. Um, but... It's what annoys me and what annoys a lot of people about Coldplay is Chris Martin seemed to be a, like literally trying to mimic Bono. Does it sound just <coughs> here, by the way? A rush of blood to the head. Yeah, that's whatever. That's and then it. X, X and, and has, Y is, is deadly. X and Y is actually great. Um, yeah. There is good stuff on X and Y. That's right. Um, I'll still, like, like I said, take or leave it. Now, the last thing I heard, they were doing like dancey songs and they were oh my God. Cl- clapping their hands together to because he wanted to be Bono. Yeah, so bad. So he, bad. Must got, he must have got the Bono talk. He must have, and, and bought Bono into talk. it. Yeah. I, I told you about the time I got trapped in someone's basement in Germany and I was made watch the uh, fucking Coldplay live Blu ray. Oh, like, no. fucking hell, lad. Like, three I'm hours I was there. Three hours. Listen, yeah, like, look, I don't want to spend too long on Coldplay, but I had to put them in. I had to mention them because it'd be stupid not to. I don't have any particularly damaging stories about Coldplay apart from the fact that when he was with Gwyneth Paltrow he was even a bit of a dick then yeah yeah. seems to have chilled out now the rest of the band don't ever really seem to get to talk no but even the music like what I've heard from them in the last like five six years that doesn't even need a band it's him and like a piano or a synthesizer and like electronic beats yeah. you know it, 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 again I have, I have a similar argument as to why I fell out of favour with Radiohead where the music doesn't sound like a band anymore it just sounds like a load of just nonsense somebody banged together in the studio and he just sang on sang on it and i yeah, have that like, problem with radio heads defense radio or maybe not their defense they think that the idea of the rock band is dead yes they could go push it further with ideas from all the members still contributing yes. to the to the part of the song that is mm. belong to them the bass mm. the drums the lead guitars stuff like that. so yeah in a way they drop some guitars but the rest of it still stands up but these the, everything from his Wanting to go straight to arenas to charity work and talking mm. like a dickhead. Mm. He wants to, he's wants to be Bono from day one. Man. He bought into that the rules of Bono chat hard. Yeah, and, and didn't hard. he? Um, didn't they pledge there like eight months ago that they're not going to tour anymore because of the carbon footprint of touring? Yeah, I think they said that. Uh, <laughs> I bet you, I bet you they will. I bet you they will because there ain't no fucking money in selling records because who the fuck buys records anymore? Not people who listen to Coldplay, I'll tell you that much. Unless they were clever enough to jump out before this virus. Mm, maybe. Uh, they, can't, they can't not play live. No band can't not play live. They might like, just... <coughs> they're, no, they're just... They're, they're taking like some time off, but they will come back. I yeah. guarantee you they will. they will. The only thing you could do realistically is like book a couple of like 100,000 seater stadiums five times a year in different parts of the world and just try and... What like, you're doing then is then like you're doing five times the amount of work. Yeah. Then you would normally would have to like then play one. Him, his, his ego playing smaller venues? Oh man, I don't know. 
I don't know. Like, I, I, like they're so big now. They're the, one of the biggest bands in the world. I don't. I never. I'll, until the day I die, I will never understand how they got that big. Like they because were just. They did f- what a lot. Of, they did what a lot of bands do. Start with like some sort of semblance of respect, and then go into. Just, Jesus Christ! I, yeah, like, but the music I changed so much as well. Just, they changed it to whatever the fuck they wanted to. To, or whatever would sell at the most, yeah, but, yeah. But, but still be looked at upon by some people as like arty, but it's not. It's not. It's not at all. Look, like I'm he's not talk about, yeah, he's well, one of those. Uh, what's his name? Chris. Uh, Chris Martin. Chris Martin. He's one of those fucking pricks. He was like, "Tell me a nice story." Type of prick. He's like, um, uh, he wouldn't have anybody saying anything negative about anybody. You know what I mean? Mm. he'd be on fucking Facebook like oh let's not talk about the voice let's, let's look at this picture of a puppy or whatever like, there's no reality in him whatsoever he's 100% like he's created his own little world and he wants to live in it the only, yeah the only thing I, I think I've liked that he did was his appearance on extras taking the piss out of himself it was very funny maybe I always think that he looks like Guy Ritchie as well the director like, yeah, I, a little tiny bit yeah I don't know what it is I was got him and Guy Ritchie kind of mashed up together in my head Martin's more Little cheeky chappy kind of yeah. Uh, Richie's know, Richie's like a real gentleman now, isn't he? It's like suits and canes and all. He's rocking. He's all um, fucking he, proper now. He was with, we married to Madonna, remember? Mm. Jamie Mac. Mm. But look, and Chris Martin used to go out with the woman who puts uh, sells vaginal eggs and 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 fanny candles, yeah. box smelling candles. Gwyneth well, Paltrow, who's clearly either lost the plot or is a genius. Uh, probably a bit of both. I think she's both. Yeah, you can be a bit of both, can't you? Yeah. You can be a marketing genius. Oh, oh yeah. Just all the fucking... But also, who's spreading I, lies. And exactly. Kind of oh, yeah, nice. dangerous lies. She was selling them like, astronaut patches and all, remember? Oh, um, it's like fucking she lumps of tin foil or something stuck onto yourself. That, and was she one of the, the fucking uh, Suntang or Arsehole people as well? She might have been. Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah like, uh, look, I'm not going to get into too much call play. Yeah. Because I want to move off them. Who is your next one? I picked the most hated rapper of all time. Um, I had to, I had to. It's Ja Rule. Yeah, he's he's definitely in the bad books now. Lately, oh well, yeah, 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 because of the fire festival. <laughs> Should we get into that? Now, I had to pick Ja Rule. I fucking hell, I, I'm sweating thinking about him. I think he's the most hated rapper of all time. I think he's more hated than than Vanilla Ice or any kind of gimmicky bullshit. Um, and I think. I have a theory as the boy he is, um, as the boy he's hated. When he started off, first of all, I put I put a song up there called "It's Murder, It's Moida," which is like Moida, Moida, um, which is actually a really good song. And this is this is where I turned. This is where I turned on 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 ja Rule. This this song has like fucking uh, Jay Z, DMX, it has a load of fucking people guesting on it, which is probably why it's good. But um. He started off trying to do that whole DMX hard man type of shtick, you know, and yeah. it, it just it didn't work. It didn't stick to him at all, and nobody took him seriously. Um, he kind of weird looking, but I don't think that even mattered. But he tried and he tried and he tried so fucking hard to be this. Like DMX isn't necessarily like gang affiliated or anything like that. DMX is most, most certainly... He, on, on, he, doesn't, on the, he doesn't need a gang. Yeah. He's hard on his own. Yeah. yeah, but he's most certainly like on the kind of the poppier end of hard hip-hop. Like, you know what I mean? Like he has songs that have crossed over. Like Jam yeah. he he didn't get what he wanted from the style of music he wanted to make. So he ended up going down this kind of R&B route that yeah. soured everybody on him. Like he... he he kind of shot himself in the foot because instead of just disappearing into fucking obscurity, which is bound to happen because his kind of hard hitting proper rap music wasn't taken. He decided like every song has to have like female vocal on it. Every song has to have like this real soft, like fucking she met me in the morning. We went for tea or whatever. Shy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything had to be about fucking loving women and fucking, you know, uh, going to the club and drinking Cristal, but all had to be done in such a soft R and B approachable manner. But even then, when you go and look at his top songs, you go and look at his, his top three songs, like they're fucking dirt. Like there's nothing, there's nothing in them. And I you can't look at even think of a Jarrell song. Like, 
Like, what's this big one? Let me have a look I here. I always now. get mixed up with Nelly. Nelly was straight into pop, and that kind of worked. His big okay. song was, uh, it's called Always On Time. And even that, like, there's, like, there's a massive drop-off between his top song and his toured song. You know what I mean? He never, ever done. He got famous for being a fucking Egypt more than he did for a musician. Um, he started a million beefs where he got fucking wrecked and all of he's them. In a, he's in a beef right now with 50 Cent. Yeah, like, what, boy? I know that, I saw that. Yeah, like, 50 Cent beef with everybody because 50 Cent hasn't fucking, literally hasn't 50 Cent. He hasn't tuppence to rub together right now. So 50 Cent is just trying he's to keep mo- his career minus, alive. Minus huh? He's minus a tenner. Yeah, he's exactly. Proper. But he's doing everything he can to fucking stay in the public eye. But like 50, if you pick one, like one of 50 cent singles in the last fucking 20 years, it would have sold a, a, a thousand times more than the best selling fucking Ja Rule song. So Ja Rule was a fucker for going after people and trying to start these beefs and trying to get his own little squad going. Um, mm. Like he saw like whatever Rough Riders and all, and he started his own little thing. And that went fucking nowhere either. Like, it's just, he, he done himself zero favours. Now, I have to give it to him because that first album, even though it didn't take well, is fucking decent. There's some bangers on that first album. And he's guested on songs where like, he can do it. He can do it. But he's become a victim of his own non-success. So this is why he's definitely hated but the reason I picked him as the boy I don't understand why he's so hated is because he absolutely has the ability to do hip hop correctly, but he keeps stopping himself because he, I think he's after getting to the point now where he's so old, he doesn't understand what people want. So he's stuck in this time loop of like fucking people want this kind of 2003 style kind of R and B Will Smith style shit, you know? And it's, he's gone fucking nowhere with it. But every now and again, he'd guest on a song and he'd knock it out of the park if it's like a proper heavy hitting, hard fucking banger of a track. And you're like, fuck it, this is where Ja Rule should live because his first album is like this. But for some reason, someone talked him into it or he talked himself into it into just changing everything up. But like, it's still deep in, his, in Ja Rule's soul. There's, there's a spark there that maybe could be, could be re-fucking ignited. But after that fire Festival thing, I don't think he's ever coming back. Like, so he was like the face of this fire yes. Festival. For anyone that doesn't know what happened there, yeah. watch the documentary Fire on Amazon, is it? I think it's on Netflix as well. Um, he's been in prison a few times. He's been in prison a few times. He only got out of prison a while ago. Uh, yes, yeah, so the fire Festival was the thing organized by this millionaire kid who wanted to uh, rent a private island to put on this big joint gig and it was meant to be Ja Rule and Blink-182 and you know, a hundred other bands and uh, the whole thing just disintegrates and it's fucking, watch the documentary, it's a fucking fabulous disaster. A fucking fabulous disaster. Like all these bad for indulging in Schindenfreude or however you pronounce the German uh, the word for taking a little bit of pleasure in other people's misfortune yes yes like it's it's it so though. grim but your man the main guy behind it like it's, to be honest it seemed like Ja Rule was just being used as the face of it he it's was not, and he yeah, knew it yeah like it's not it's the, 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 the festival's issues were not his problem like you could see him try, like every now and again he'd show up and they'd tell him what's going on and he'd be like, oh, no, it's grand. You know, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. I'll get out there and I'll just rock the mic for like 18 hours and everybody, everybody would be happy. And they were waiting on that. And the thing was a disaster. Everybody was promised like five-star meals and they got like cheese sandwiches and they had, were in tents that were flooded and oh, full of God, crabs. Yeah. It was, it was, it's a beautiful disaster. <laughs> a fucking beautiful disaster. And, it, and it's even got fucking blokes sucking fellas dicks and everything in it. It's full, everything, you name it. Yeah. You across the board, it hit it, it checks every fucking box you want, ever want to check from a documentary. It's fucking it's, fabulous. It's it's hard to know how involved he was with that fire festival because there is lots of lawsuits against him, and I don't know how he's going to get on. But who knows? Who I cares? mean, he could just you start doing fuck tours, him, him, talking about he, it. He was still pushing it when he knew it was shit. So fuck him. Oh yeah, he absolutely knew it was a disaster. Like his whole yeah. thing was that he, he, I think he had put some money into it as well to get it. He get was the ball an inv- he was an investor and he was yeah. a partner. In it. Yeah, yeah, most certainly. But I think all the the moves that fucked everything up that he would have just left up to other people are what fucked that thing over. You know? Yeah. Like if you're investing in a festival and you turn around to like the main guy whose festival 
whose idea it was. And you say, yeah, man, like, whatever you need, like you want me to do all these videos and yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. I'll show up and you know, here's a, here's a million dollars and I, I need one and a half back at the end of it. Plus my fee and my hotel and blah, blah, blah. You know, you're going to leave the details up to the person who's organizing the festival. Um, and you're going to go into troubleshooting mode, of course. Yeah. The fact that they were they were partying so hard on borrowed money. Yes. Before they even had, and he was part of that as well. Oh, one hundred percent. Fuck all these lads. Exactly. I, but I, I never, I never liked Jarrell really anyway. So no, exactly. Yeah, for full on fuck him. But it's, like I said, I think there's a spark in him um, that he he misjudged, he missed his mark, and he definitely could have been as big as as anyone else. But he, he fucked himself. He shot himself, and he mm. continues to make this shitty fucking club music from the mid two thousands. Uh, who is your last one? Creed. Everyone hates Creed. Oh, my hates friend, the meter girl. My sacrifice. Singing like Eddie Vedder in a kind of band that are supposed to be a rock band, but seem seem to only really have ballads coming out. I know. I'm sure. <sighs> I'm sure there's people who will tell me, oh man, go back and listen to Creed's first oh, stuff. Is no. Or else the album has loads of, don't listen to the singles. I'm like, I'm not doing any of that. No, I'm not, absolutely mm-hmm. not. Do you remember they uh, yeah. they got real big and then told everybody they were like Christians? They kind of waited yes. until they were big and then yes. ratted themselves out. And they then did, like, yeah. yeah, within two years, but gone. Yeah, and he's mad. Like, he's proper on drinking drugs now, that lad. He's fucked. Is, didn't he? He's, was it him he, or the rest of them that formed Alter Bridge? No, it's Mark Tremonti, who's yeah. an amazing guitarist. Yeah, he doesn't, really particular, doesn't particularly like right stuff that I like. Yeah. Tremonti's an amazing guitar player, and he started Alderbridge yeah. with uh, your man. No, they were heavier. Man, My, Miles Kennedy from uh, like the, the band with Slash. My, That's Slash right. Kennedy. That's right. Yeah, Miles Kennedy. Uh, um, like, they are a bit heavier in the sense yeah. that... Uh, well, I see. I don't really know much more about Creed's other stuff because I'm not. I'm sure there's a few songs where they go, "No, we should do one. We put the distortion pedal on." Yes. The the yes. down, the yeah. down, down. Switch off the yeah. chorus pedal and turn on the distortion pedal. Yeah. But uh, like, yeah, Mister Fucking Scott, stop fucking. Yeah, let's go, Christian. He's a weird looking fucker, man. The size of his jaw mm-hmm. and face, and just like, I want to. He, he, is he that? He, I think he's got bipolar. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And yeah. He had a psychotic breakdown a few years ago, mm. um, and he—I think he's completely broke as far as I know. I could be wrong. He doesn't do anything anymore. I don't think does he? he I don't know. He said he said that he had a proper breakdown. And he thought all of his money was stolen on him and given to ISIS. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Like he has a great voice, but if he automatically went in, like you know, in terms of like what notes he can hit, but I don't mm. like his voice. But he did have a dr- drink and drug absolute fucking meltdown. But um, that's that Christian thing is one of the things that turned everyone against Creed. Yeah, but it was also around the same time as like Jesus, when was my sacrifice? Here? Or when arms wide open and all that stuff that was coming out at the same time was quite heavy. St- Stuff, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, just before new metal. <laughs> what was his name? Scott Stapp, his name was, yeah, the singer, yeah. Um, yeah, he's released. So, I'm just looking at here now. That, that's that's that was breaking at the same time as new metal creed were. Oh, it would have been, yeah, 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 yeah. mid uh, mid late 90s, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking at here now. Like, no, like, I think that's honestly, I think that creed were. Yeah, ninety nine, I say onwards. But that my sacrifice song was the first, and when arms would open was the first ones I heard. Or I was like, "Fuck, they're shit." Mm. Like that is, do you know what that is? That's pop ballads written with a, like, well, well, but they're all wearing like mm. rock clothes. But they all look like they were dressed in a Tony Hawk's fucking like screen yeah. select simulation. And I'm like, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading about it here uh, about the, the singer going mad. It's just, it's not good. Tried to kill himself a few times. He has a big yeah. piss head. Um, oh yeah, that's right. There's another fucking callback. There's a video. There's a sex video of him and Kid Rock with four women doing the rounds, and him and Kid Rock had to pay someone off like millions of dollars to get the video deleted. No way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so loads of these hated cunts are all fucking in it together. Um, yeah, he's committed oh, suicide. Was, there was, oh, do you know what it was? There was a senator involved in that as well. Was there? There you go. Yeah, and that's where they go. That's where they got shut down. Otherwise, they would have not been able to pay enough money to get that shut down. Um, yeah, he put out an album last year. Um, he released the solo albums every now and again. But he's, he's on and off the fucking uh, 
That's mad that we linked those two acts together. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. There's a circle of fucking hatred here. A circle yeah, of they hatred. Had a, they had a sex tape in 99. Holy shit, man. When was Creed? Creed were only... They started formed in 94. So I think they were, would have been big in 99. I think that My Sacrifice song came out in the early 2000s, but that was like that, that was that big yeah. song. That's, that's just, the beginning of troop, Troops Metal, Creed. Oh, it definitely is. It yeah. definitely is. That's and the birth of Troops Metal. Like, like, when people we used to ask for Creed when I was DJing, like, the shit, I, I can't no, say it what now. what do you even do? Like, I can't say it now. But the stuff I used to say to them back then was, is that... Uh, uh, an elaborate no. Yeah, a big no. A big um, L absolutely. no. Absolutely. Yeah. What the fuck do you want me to play a ballad with people like... Basically a big a big masturbating song. That's, That's all it was. pretty much all it is. A big fucking love maker. Big, big love maker, yeah. With arms wide open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's garbage, but they were so big. Like They were so big. They were big because they were big with people that went like used it as a as an excuse to go. I, I'm a rocker now. Yes, 100%. I wear the big I, I wear the big chains over black tight t shirts. Yes, the blue coat jeans that, brigade. Like blue jeans were probably actual black cowboy boots. Possibly, probably, yeah. Or new rocks. Yeah, we're going to see Creed, and the, the light show was just amazing. Like what the songs did they play? The, the light show, like the light show, was so it's good. The band that Mia and a girl who's not into rock can be into together. One hundred percent. 100%. Like, chances are, like, you could you could probably go to a Creed gig and enjoy yourself just because it's mindless garbage. Like, it's fine. There's lots of lighters being held and oh. like, girls on the backs of their oh. fellow shoulders. Yeah. Or vice versa. Wouldn't recommend that. That's it. Places. Daisy Duke wearing fucking young ones sitting on that fella wearing a white <laughs> t-shirt and a big chain and a fucking cap and sunglasses indoors fucking yeah. on his shoulders with our hands in the air. Wow! Wow. Look, there, there's the deal with Creed. He went mental. Alder Bridge, Mark Tremonti started Alder Bridge, and uh, no one cares about. No, Alder Bridge are still fucking probably a pretty big band. Uh, absolutely not my kind of thing at all. That is nope. that's music Far for from. very very young rockers. Not into it. Who's uh, who's your last one? My last one is the ultimate, the ultimate one, and uh, of, of hatreds. It's it's the one that jumps into everybody's mind the second you talk about it. And yeah, I have to say, I I think of this. I, I figured out the reason, right? So the yeah. band are Nickelback, obviously. It's, it is the ultimate one for this. The Save ultimate, the, best the last, the ultimate band. Now, what I done was I went deep. I went fucking deep. <laughs> I, honest to God, I strapped a whole other dick onto my dick and I went deep. And <laughs> I I listened to fucking loads right I went through every album from the beginning up to the new ones and I they had a, they had a bit of a banger a few years ago actually yeah uh, they did feed, yeah feed the, feed the machine yeah Three years feed the machine yeah. they have a song uh, oh, fucking hell I can't remember what it's called they have this song about riding that's horrific like a horror show of a song and I was going to put it on just to have something to talk about and uh, I looked it up on the internet and I was like, these cunts nearly came, they nearly went down over the song. Like, like this this nearly ended them. And it's all like, I like, the, I like it when your knees are dirty and there's powder on your nose, you know. I like the way you piss your cacks and all, all this like fucking horrific shit about women. Like horrific, horrific lyrics about women in this song. And uh, I was going to use that one. I was like, no, I can't, I can't. I'm going to pick another one. So I found this song. It's called Million Miles an Hour. And it's a little hit, man. It's a little... Fucking banger of a song. The riff is fucking outrageous. Um, it sounds like a Nine Inch Nails riff or something. It's fucking deadly. But <laughs> the music's not that bad. I yeah. don't really. The only thing I hated, like, I, I people hated them before that Rockstar song. But that Rockstar song can literally die. In a it can die. Time. Well, here's my theory. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you my theory, right? I'm gonna, t- I, and I don't think it's even a theory. I think it might even be a fact, right? Because Nickelback themselves are essentially just Bush too, right? It's just the it sounds like Bush, um. They're Canadian, whatever. But I'm gonna, people hate Nick Nickelback because of the singer's face. He has an annoying face. His fucking haircut and his stupid his little, little beard hair. and his little hamster fucking features. And I think the minute you see his fucking wretched rodent face, you go, absolutely not. A bit like Bono, but even more so. It's that poodle-headed shit. 
and him yeah. fucking trrr, 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 giving a fucking giving it the lemons, uh, and it's got this kind of shit kicker country style to it, even though they're Canadian. Now I know there's cowboys in Canada, but like for fuck's sake, man, like. Yeah, but your man Chad Kruger, Kruger, uh, Kruger yeah, like Kroger, Kroger. Uh, born his, in Alberta, Canada. Yeah, Alberta, yeah. Canada. I suppose would actually be touching the fucking. It's definitely, that. definitely Western, you know. Um, but yeah. you don't expect that from fucking from from Canadians. You expect that from like Texas and Albuquerque or whatever, Tennessee, whatever. But you don't expect that from Canadians. And the fact that they had this kind of dusty fucking stage type of fucking. <laughs> You know, creaky wooden floorboard stage. That's all what I think of when I think of Nickelback. I think of them playing at some shit kicker bar with, on like walking the planks of the shitty stage and dust getting fucking flown up in the air and then with their fucking guitars strumming out some garbage and people throwing bottles of fucking Budweiser at them. Like, it's all like, huh? I remember they had, um, the, the hate that the hate really started for them on the, the album after the How You Remind Me. Mm. So what's that silver side up or something like that? Um, I'm telling you now. Um, now, I think there was a bit, uh, say a silver side up, yeah, in 2001. Um, so they had an album after that. Oh, after that, that. that, where they literally recreated that song. Here, remind me. It's called the Long Road. Work. Yeah. Now th- there is, if you're bored on the internet, you can go to YouTube and put in Nickelback comparison, and there's a bunch of videos, and there's one in particular where I think they take four or five songs and they play them all at the same time. Yeah. And they all have the same formula. It used to be a foil with How You Remind Me and Someday put on top of each other. And it, the foil was called Nickelback Sucks. MP3. Yes. Yes. And you can actually find a YouTube video of Nickelback Sucks. Yeah. And it was not like you to say sorry someday so yeah. it's the same son exactly there's another one where they learn on that say you want to be a rock star or whatever the fuck it is they learn that on the top they, ha- they definitely have a formula um, and it hurts it hurts them but do they deserve the hate no they're just yeah. a fucking rock just band for rock, just for that rock star yeah you know? but they're just a fucking so rock I band I just want to be a big rock rah, star rah, 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 rah. Uh, no yeah Listen, look there's, ter- there's clearly people in that band that love writing a big dirty riff yeah they're, they're fucking very good at writing riffs like listen to that that million miles an hour whatever song the riff on that song is outrageous it's fucking <laughs> stonking like no just give it 10 seconds like you don't wait once he starts singing turn it off but like listen to that <laughs> riff that riff is a fucking banger of a little riff like that's a very respectable fucking and it's very heavy um respectable fucking heavy riff for a band but at the end of the day they're just a fucking rock band like i do think they i do think they took like so much more heat than they deserve but i'm not saying saying they don't deserve heat yeah the the levels that level that's world class yeah the ratio is way off when they go back world class heat they took coming up coming up hot behind them now will be someone like volby for me like, oh, I'd rather listen to Nickelback all day than Volby. Yeah, I, honest to God, I'd rather listen to Nickelback than Volby. Volby are poison. Definitely. Poison. I'd rather listen to three Nickelback albums back to back than one, one Volby song. Yeah, it's torture. I hate Volby. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I, I, do you yeah. know what? Even if them lads were sound, if I met them, I'd still hit them. That's they how bad. Sound. Like, even, I bet you they're sound. I don't, I don't think. think I, after your man walked off stage there a few weeks ago, just there wasn't weeks. Well, that was months, whatever. But in, in the before, <laughs> time doesn't matter anymore. In the land before, yeah, in the time before, in the yeah. old, in the old now, yeah, it's like two gigs in a row. And Dublin and Belfast walked off stage, didn't he? Yes, um, he walked off stage in the middle of the song because he couldn't get the sound right. I'm like, yeah, he couldn't hear himself. It's like, mate, just yeah. fucking play, you prick. You have a guitar. What? I, it, it's not working. I'm sorry. Because they're anti Swedish or something. They are Danish. Danish, they go. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, it's not working. But you just turn your amp up. Like you prick, you know what I mean? Shout yeah, with the I'm engineer, more exactly. vocals here. It's a rock and roll show, you prick. You see, they don't get enough heat. They get no heat at all. No heat. Well be. I don't understand that. And Nickelback get, get too much. Like, there's no way they should be getting the fucking heat they get. No. They had. <clears throat> I still like that song. Here, remind me. I don't care. I like it. I like it. It's a good song. No, how you remind me. Oh like yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like it's just a well-written fucking. It's my catchy. There's nothing wrong with catchy. Catchy's, catchy's, catchy's good. Song. Now, he's very I good. Fucking, like I wouldn't go out and buy it. No. A vinyl or anything. I wouldn't just but it became a thing to hate it became exactly. a, a popular thing to hate it was a Nickelback. Cultural movement to hate Nickelback. It was. 
like there was no escape from the hatred of Nickelback. I can only imagine what it was like to be a Nickelback fan, you know, years ago. I like, know a couple of people who were into them, like. I know people who were who were who were like they were like oh no I kind of liked them but no one who was out and out like anybody who was out and out was hiding like Anne Frank they were just no, that I, I know I know uh, a girl who was mad into Nickelback really um, like when that how your mummy song came out she went like there's only one album before that I think possibly I maybe and, uh, like then all of a sudden like this was like Jesus they're all right like and then uh, the pure hatred just yeah it. you couldn't you couldn't even say I liked them but, but, but then again. Could you be asked? Could you be asked even liking them either? Yeah, exactly. Could you be asked defending them or liking them? This is the yeah, problem. Or liking them? Yeah. Could you be asked being divisive about it? Like, look, I don't know. I don't that's, know. Anyway, listen. That's it. Um, that's it. That's fucking it. It's Nickelback. It's fucking mic drop. Like, fucking Nickelback drop. Um, that's it for this week. We'll be back again in a week. Uh, yes, you can uh, yeah, podcast next week and radio show every Saturday um, on Mixler at 9pm GMT Irish time slash English time but we, we like saying Irish time um, you can get us on facebook.com forward slash last hour podcast and you can get us on patreon.com forward slash patreon.com forward slash last hour podcast if you want to throw us five dollars a month there's no way of sending it to euros I'm sorry I hate saying five dollars a month it bothers me but I can't send it to euros it's an American website I'm sorry. It could be worse. You could be calling them dollars when you meant your eyes like some people, Irish people. I'll oh, just throw me a few bucks. Mm. Sorry, excuse me. I'll throw you a few bucks. Yeah, ask your mom. I'll bat you. <laughs> Anybody calls their mother their mom, I'll give them the back of the hand. No. No. Back of the hand. Man, woman, or child, wabomp is what they'll get. Mom. Like, just jump onto the sidewalk there. The pot. Not even the, the fucking pot. The pot. The pot. You're on the pot, you. Anyway, yeah. uh, we'll be well, back again in a week's time. Uh, thank you very much, and we shall talk to you then.